Hello and welcome to the Pro Yaki Report, Volume 1, Episode 44, Park Effects. I'm Michael Westbay, your host. Now, I've been wanting to do a lot of sabermetric analysis of players, and one of the things that I keep running into is that a lot of the formulas require the park effects in order to better evaluate players against each other, eliminating the effect that the home park plays on um, the player's offense. So this offseason seems like a very good time to really dive into that. And in order to get a start, I'm presenting park effects this week. Now, Jim Allen's guide back in the late 1990s had park effects. However, those are very much outdated now. Um, and, you know, a lot of them are for parks that don't even exist anymore. So all of this needs to be redone. And to that effect, let's take a look at the data that I've generated for park effects over the last three seasons, 2011 through 2013. Now, one of the first things you may notice in these tables is that the number of home games does not necessarily equal the number of away games. This is because, as you know, many teams in Japan play at third-party venues throughout the season. Um, but there is one particular aspect that uh, I think that this really does show, and that is that... Teams like uh, the Odex Buffaloes, who, when they merged with Kintetsu, decided to have kind of a dual home location. Um, their main location is Kyoseta Dome, also known as Osaka Dome. And their sub-location is Green Stadium Kobe, which is now called Hotomoto Stadium, I believe. I just stuck to their Osaka Dome or Kyoseta Dome games for this study. Also, teams like Lotte and Hiroshima tend to play pretty much all of their games at their respective main home stadiums. So they've got a lot more data compared to Odex. The next thing I'd like to bring your attention to would be the color coding of the tables. What I've done is I've created a gradation from dark blue to light blue for stadiums that favor pitchers. Green are the neutral stadiums. And the gradation going from light yellow to darker yellow to light orange to darker orange to lighter red to darker red, this is showing the progression of becoming more and more in favor of hitters, so a hitter's park, in regard to those columns in those colors. The main things that I looked at are runs scored versus runs allowed, then uh, hits overall, doubles, triples, and home runs. So let's take a look at that 2011 to 2013 table. The data here pretty much shows that the past three seasons have a fairly neutral effect on most categories. Nagoya Dome is a bit of an extreme pitcher's park with regards to allowing home runs. And Tokyo Dome, uh, Jingu, Cebu Dome, and Kyoseta Dome are where most home runs have been allowed. But with the effect of the new new ball introduced this year, I wanted to see exactly what kind of influence 2013 had on these numbers. So I just ran the data for 2013, and what really stands out is that Koshien becomes an extreme triples park. It was the highest triple park in the 2011 to 2013 range, but it just blows everything away in 2013 by itself. 
Uh, K-Stadium Kobe and Cebu Dome also come up in a darker red um, for triples, which is kind of interesting. Nagoya Dome, again, is an extreme pitcher's park with regards to home runs. Sapporo Dome goes from being neutral with regard to home runs to being a pitcher's park. Now if we go back a year and take the three-year average, so we get 2010 to 2012, we've got the old ball now combined with two years of the old new ball. Got that? Here we see that Chiba becomes a little more neutral with regards to home runs. So the 2010 season seemed to add some home runs out in Chiba. Fukuoka and Sapporo become slightly more hitter friendly in home runs as well. Going from neutral to hitter favored in regards to home runs. But let's go back one more year to 2009 through 2011. Now we've got two years of the old ball to one year of the old new ball. And wow, Jingu really heats up in triples, which cool off pretty much everywhere else. Uh, Chiba cools off in regards to home runs. And run production, surprisingly, is down overall with regards to how a ballpark um, affects runs. So there are more neutral parks with regards to runs scored versus runs allowed than before. But let's take a look at those ranges where we just divide it into three categories. Neutral, pitcher friendly, and hitter friendly. The new ball seemed to even things out more, make everything a little more neutral than it was before the introduction of the new ball. So the past three years, everything is much more neutral than it was before. The old ball combined with the old new ball seemed to favor hitters a great deal more than pitchers. Now, I'm interested to know in what patterns you see in this data. Links to the data will be available accompanying the video on either the Google Plus Pro Yaku community or the JapaneseBaseball.com Bayside West Yokohama blog. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaku report. Thank you for joining me, and until next week, take care.